Hey, how's it going? Hope all is fantastic. If not, you always have tomorrow. Anyway, I'm talking about random odd facts from all around the world. If you know these facts, awesome. If you don't, awesome. Hope you enjoy the video no matter what. Jack the Ripper was still making headlines when Nintendo was founded. Most people nowadays know Nintendo as a leading light of late 20th century video game culture, producing his hits ranging from Super Mario Brothers to Legend of Zelda. But the company was actually founded in Japan in 1889 to produce handmade playing cards, which I think those playing cards were actually nudies. So, interestingly, hopefully and thankfully, Super Mario wasn't part of that genre. In England that same year, the notorious serial killer dubbed Jack the Ripper was still making newspaper headlines. The fifth murder attributed to Jack having been committed the previous November. Oh, the timing was perfect. The Great Wall of China, one of the planet's most famous artificial structures, was largely built over a long period extended time frame, from the 3rd century BC to the 17th century AD, and eventually stretched 13,171 miles, a long way to run. Hopefully you have a bottle of water. Let me know in the comments below if you ran that distance before. I've done maybe one mile. Despite its ancient origins though, construction work on the wall wasn't actually completed until 1878, during the late dynasty of that time frame. Two years earlier, Alexander Graham Bell had catapulted the world into a new era of modernness with his groundbreaking invention, the telephone. On March of 1876, he made the world's first phone call to his assistant and he said, Mr. Watson, come here. I want to see you. Sort of sounds like a Sherlock Holmes episode. Mansa Musa, 1280 to 1337, was emperor of the gold-rich West African Mali Empire, who had what experts attributed to the estimate of worth of $400 billion, inflation included today. For context, that was twice as wealthy as Amazon's head, Jeff Bezos, who is one of the richest people alive. He was reportedly so rich when he donated some to the poor people while visiting Cairo, the gold entering Egypt almost toppled the country's economy. Cleopatra, the queen of ancient Egypt, as we all may have heard about, was married to her co-ruler and her brother, Phanamine the 13th, in approximately 51 BC, when she was 18 years old and he was only a mere 10. Gross. Then just four years later, Phanamine the 13th drowned while trying to escape a battle. Horrible way to go. Cleopatra then married his younger brother, Phanamine the 14th, when he was aged at 12. Also, she was born more than 2,400 years after the completion of Giza's three main pyramids. In 1969, only two millennia after her death, Neil Armstrong took his first steps on the moon. You go, girl. Alexander the Great was down in history after establishing the ancient world's largest empire by his mid-25s. Historians now believe the greatness was succumbed by a rare disease in 323 BC, leaving him paralyzed for over six days. A likely autoimmune disease meant the 32-year-old muscles were almost totally unmovable, to the point that doctors may not have been seen that he was still breathing. Ancient Greek scholars recorded how Alexander's body did not decompose after his premature cremation proved the man was a god. Scientists now suspect that it only meant that he was actually still alive. He's probably the only person in history who knows how to feel like toast after you're dead. The Italian Renaissance and the Inca Empire aren't often associated with each other, yet both were a phenomenon for the same era. The mountaintop citadel of Machu Picchu was completed around 1450, at the height of the empire's power. It was probably occupied until 1530. More than 6,500 miles away, as Inca emperors continue to enjoy their mountaintop retreat at McDonald's, in 1512, Italian artist Michelangelo was putting the finishing touches to his frescoes on the Vatican Sistine Chapel ceiling. If only Michelangelo knew about the Incas. There was a 22-year window during which a Japanese samurai could, in theory, have sent a fax to Abe Lincoln. Japan's samurai class existed until the end of the system during that time frame of 1868. The electrical printing telegraph, a forerunner of the digital fax machine, which was patented in 1843, and Abe Lincoln was assassinated in 1865. On May of 1886, Dr. John Pembleton sold the first glass of Coca-Cola at Jacobs Pharmacy in Atlanta, charging five cents a glass. Nowadays, 
Can't you get five cents a glass if you recycle? I'm not quite sure. Anyway, nearly three years later, on March of 1889, construction of the Eiffel Tower in Paris, France was completed. Neat. I think a great marketing scheme at that time frame was to throw a bottle of Coca-Cola off the Empire. I mean, I think a great advertisement during that time frame would be to throw a Coca-Cola bottle off of the Eiffel Tower. Anyway, quick one. Kim Jong-il wrote six operas. Also, Princeton researchers successfully turned a live cat into a functioning telephone in 1929. Mills described the 1929 cat telephone, constructed by Princeton researchers Ernest Weaver and Charles Bray, who removed the skull and most of the brain of a live cat and connected its auditory nerve to an electrode. If I read correctly, the cat did survive, but they automatically killed it because they were curious of what was going on in the cat. And also, I'm curious if the there was a cat speakerphone during that time frame. The very first bomb dropped by the Allies on Berlin during World War II killed the only elephant in the Berlin Zoo. Hopefully that wasn't the idea for Dumbo. In the early days of photography, it took several minutes to take a photo because cameras relied on slow chemical reactions. If subjects moved at all, the image turned out blurry. A smile was more difficult to hold for a long period of time, so people grimace or look serious. And looking at Victorian images are quite creepy and so forth, because a lot of them were taking photographs of their dead relatives and loved ones. Would you do that nowadays? Take a selfie in front of a dead relative? Let me know in the comments below. Whether or not we're alone in the universe remains one of the cosmos' biggest unsolved mysteries. And also, but that hasn't stopped scientists from trying to figure out what to do just in case there are some little green men out there that turned out to be so friendly. Astronomers at Columbia University assess the way we Earthlings find our planets. When we find a star somewhere out there in the cosmos, we look for tiny dimming lights in the brightness, which can indicate that a planet is orbiting it. So astronomers out there propose that by using lasers to counteract our sun's dimness, we could hide ourselves from anyone's looking. They claim that not only could be theoretically done nowadays, we do indeed have the technology capable of doing it. Cloaking an entire planet may seem impossible, or sci-fi indeed, but there is a chance and it could be a reality if we so need it. Hopefully the cloak is like a Harry Potter thing and we can hide from asteroids and so forth. In 1998, Andrew Wakefield, and 12 of his colleagues published a case series in The Lancet, which suggested that the measles, mumps, and MMRA vaccine may predispose to behavioral regression and also cause autism in children. Despite the small sample size, N equals 12, the uncontrolled design and the spectacular nature of the conclusions, the paper received wide publicity, and MMRA vaccine rates began to drop because parents were concerned about the risk of autism after vaccination. Almost immediately afterwards, studies were conducted and published refuting the positive link between MMR vaccines and autism. The Lancet completely retracted the statements by Wakefield in February of 2010, admitting that several elements in the paper were incorrect, contrary to finds of the early investigation. Wakefield was actually guilty of deliberate fraud they picked and chose data that suited their case and falsified facts. Good job, Wakefield. You're probably familiar with the 1860s illustration of Lincoln being killed and assassinated, but who's that pair sharing the private box with the ill-fated president and his wife? Waiting in the comments below. The man on the far left rushing into action is Mayor Henry Rathbone. President and Miss Lincoln specifically asked him and his fiance, Claire Harris, to accompany them to the theater. After Booth fired the shot, Rathbone tried to tackle him to the ground, but Booth was able to get free by slicing Rathbone in the arm with a dagger. Rathbone was never free of the memory and guilt of that night, and he reportedly felt responsible for letting Booth get away. Too bad he wasn't Keanu Reeves during that time frame. In the years to come, he experienced a bunch of health issues, from stomach ulcers to heart palpitations, and his mental state deteriorating as well. On December 23rd of 1883, 18 years after the assassination, he attacked and killed Clara, now his wife, and attempted to kill himself as well. He would spend the rest of his life in a mental institution. An unfortunate end and horrible fate. Anyway, let me know in the comments below what's your favorite fact, or if you have a fact that you'd love to share with the readers below. Anyway, have a great one. Bye.